Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to the Finance News Network today. Um, next slide, please. In fact, I won't expect people to speed read the disclaimer, but uh, next slide, please. Okay, so today uh, I'd like to introduce you to Hazer and the Hazer process. Um, as uh, introduced by Clive, um, we are an innovative Australian clean technology development company, and we're focused on commercialising the Hazer process, uh, which we think is a, a technology absolutely poised for the 21st century, in that it's a low cost, uh, as scaled up and reaching scale, and low emission process that creates two high value, high demand products. So in the Hazer process, I'll talk a little bit about the basic chemistry in a moment, but we take a hydrocarbon feedstock ideally methane, and so biogas and various green renewable feedstocks are so well suited to our process. And we split that, uh, that molecule uh, into hydrogen and synthetic graphite. So we create two uh, potentially high value products out of a single feedstock without releasing a carbon waste product in the process. We think this is a really well suited technology for our times in that there's a strong dynamic in the market for both products. Hydrogen is incredibly topical and is, you know, demand is expected to increase you know, astronomically over the next uh, 10, 20 and 30 years. And graphite is more and more in demand as we also focus on technologies such as energy storage, but also in the low carbon production of steel, aluminium and other metals. We think our process can be a leader in the clean and cost effective production of hydrogen and graphite. Um, and so we see well, ourselves well positioned for these emerging premium markets. Um, and as mentioned in the introduction, our technology has now developed to the point where we're fully funded uh, to develop the first demonstration uh, project, which will be the first larger scale, fully integrated uh, uh, production of our technology. Next slide, please. So what is the Hazer process? So in the Hazer process, we take methane. Um, we can also use natural gas, LNG, so combinations of methane and ethane. Um, and we take that gas feedstock, um, we uh, heat it in a pressurized fluidized bed reactor, a, a standard uh, typical design for a chemical process reactor in the presence of powdered iron oxide and iron ore as a process catalyst. And in that process, we take the methane, which has the chemical signature CH4, and we uh, split it uh, into two hydrogen molecules and a particle of solid graphite. So while the feedstock goes in as a gas, the carbon comes out as a solid. And in fact, the carbon is laid down layer by layer around the uh, microscopic shards of the iron oxide catalyst that uh, provide the reaction site. So we think it's a very efficient process. We think it has a very strong yield. Uh, we think it has an attractive yield and, and good energy characteristics. And it's shown itself to be stable and repeatable, hence um, our willingness after our pilot trials to now move into a demonstration project. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, our, our core focus at the moment, um, our number one objective is proving that our technology can be scaled up from the pilot stage uh, into a fully integrated, continuously operating working model. And to do that, we're building a 100 tonne per annum demonstration project uh, in collaboration with the Water Corporation um, at the Woodman Point Wastewater Treatment Plant. Now, this facility processes uh, water and water waste uh, from the southern metropolitan region of Perth. And like most uh, modern facilities of its type, it has biogas production units integrated with the water treatment where they treat um, the remedial waste from uh, the wastewater. Uh, this biogas is going to be the feed for our plant. It's currently being flared, so it's a great uh, environmental outcome. And we're taking this biogas, we strip out the contaminants in the biogas, primarily CO2, and then are converting it into uh, graphite and, uh, and uh, hydrogen. Um, Primero Group, a local Western Australian uh, engineering services company, is our engineering partner. And we've been very fortunate to secure some strong funding from the Australian government through the Australian Renewable Energy Agency. Uh, next slide, please. So the project, uh, we took a FID, a final investment decision on this project in uh, July 2020, after commencing early engineering works in June 2020 uh, with a pre-feed and feed study, um, and then working up the detailed project uh, CapEx and, and OpEx. Um, we are now currently approximately 80% through the detailed design phase. Um, we completed all necessary permitting activities in first, first quarter of this year. So all permits required for us to access the site and start construction have been granted. 
development approval, environmental approval, heritage approval. Um, through the last month, we have actually taken um, access and control of the site. Um, the site is actually within the Woodman Point Wastewater Treatment Facility, and we're very grateful to our host, the Water Corporation, for their excellent collaboration. And we've actually completed site clearing activities to leave us with a level construction pad uh, ready for civil construction to start in the next month. Uh, we're currently finishing detailed design activities and procurement activities. Um, we have placed procurement uh, orders for the major uh, equipment packages, compressors, hydrogen purification units, uh, for the materials and fabrication uh, of our reactor. And we are currently targeting a commissioning of this project in December of this year, in December 2021. So all continuing to go well. Um, it's a tough environment to be executing a project, but our project team is uh, making an outstanding effort uh, with both the complex design issues and dealing with the difficulties of um, interne international logistics uh, in the COVID environment. Uh, but they're continuing to do well. And at this stage, we're maintaining our end of 2021 guidance uh, for startup of the project. The intention is that the project will run for approximately two years. And that will show, allow us to demonstrate to future customers that our project and our process is ready to scale up to larger commercial capacities and is ready to start being used in a commercial setting. Next slide, please. So I might just now backtrack, having spoken about Hazer, um, explain what our technology does, that it's a low emission uh, process to produce hydrogen with graphite as a valuable byproduct and actually talk a little bit about why hydrogen and why there's so much focus on it. So quite simply, hydrogen uh, is absolutely intrinsic to the continued decarbonisation um, of the industry, transport and the power sectors and achieving the climate goals that have been set down as nationally determined targets uh, under the Paris Climate Agreement. And of course, in this year, in 2021, uh, we've seen an absolute flood of, of major international announcements um, from companies, uh, from countries such as Japan, Korea, uh, the EU, China and the US about increasing their climate ambition, setting tighter and more enforceable goals and bringing forward the date by which they will be a net zero emission uh, economy and bringing forward the dates on which they will actually start to restrict the use of carbon in heavy industry, heavy transport and other sectors where yet to decarbonise. So hydrogen is seen as critical to this because it is the mechanism by which we can store, transport and use renewable energy efficiently. It plays seven different roles in actually decarbonising the global economy. It allows mega scale renewables to be integrated with the power generation network. It allows us to distribute energy from regions that have low renewable energy resources to those that have high, or sorry, from those that have high to those that have low, such as from Australia to Japan, Australia to Europe, South Australia to New South Wales. Um, it allows us to actually bring more renewables into a system, acting as a buffer to increase the system resilience. And what this means is that in a power system um, or a big industrial setting, you can use hydrogen to um, absorb excess renewable energy when there's more available than is needed, and then to give that energy back when less is available. So it is a way of acting actually as a buffer and store as well as a transport mechanism. And then hydrogen itself is a, a pro, plays a number of roles in key markets as a, as a molecule, as a clean burning molecule, as a clean way of generating heat, as a clean way of generating power. So hydrogen can be used as an alternative to diesel in heavy transport. And in particular, there's focus on long distance transport, on ferries, um, maritime transport and on rail, on areas which aren't easy to decarbonise by batteries. It's also an important way we can decarbonise industrial energy use. So hydrogen can be burnt in a furnace or turbine, and so hence it can apply, uh, can meet some of the high temperature needs that are difficult to do through electrification alone. And it can also serve as a renewable feedstock in industries which are currently heavy emitters. So in the refining, petrochemicals, fertilisers, explosives, and a number of other heavy manufacturing sectors, hydrogen is a key input, and it's currently made by very polluting means. So technologies such as hazes, or such as the increased use of green hydrogen from electrolysis will be critical to decarbonising these sectors, and hence present an enormous market opportunity. Next slide, please. Um, so in that context of all these possible uses for hydrogen and how hydrogen will allow us to continue to make the greatest advantage of the uh, plummeting cost of wind and solar, 
we've seen a strong global focus on accelerating the deployment, the piloting, and then the rollout plans for hydrogen in national economies. You know, at the beginning of this year, you know, and very much within the last one to two years, we now have more than 30 countries have released hydrogen roadmaps. More than 200 projects um, have been originated across Europe, Australia, and Asia uh, to promote the rollout of hydrogen infrastructure and its uptake. And there's over $80 billion of um, potential investment has already been announced with up to $300 billion of investment in the near to the medium term um, highlighted through various reports. And in particular, we're seeing a large number of national programs to incentivize the rollout of technologies. Uh, we've seen multi-billion multi dollar incentive programs now being announced um, in France, Germany, and the Netherlands, um, in Canada and the US, um, and Japan and Korea. All of these provide very fertile ground for the rollout and scale up of new technologies such as ours. You pro next slide, please. Um, so in the last minutes available, I'd like quickly to give an update on uh, two or three things. One is in uh, our business development activities. Um, in parallel to the uh, development of the CDP as the first um, uh, fully integrated larger scale deployment of our technology, we're seeing increased interest in our technology from uh, utilities, heavy industry players, large scale energy players um, globally. And we're also now that the uh, targets for bringing these technologies forward have been uh, have been accelerated, seeing a wider range of potential end users, heavy industry, transport, utilities. And so we're working uh, with our engineering partner, Chioda, and we're working with potential end users uh, across all of those regions uh, to look for the best sites to which to scale up beyond the CDP and looking at potential commercial scale plants in possibly the two to 3,000 tonne per annum uh, scale size and we're looking to undertake a range of pre uh, feasibility engineering activities through this year to be ready to go into feasibility studies hopefully before the end of the year in parallel with the CDP proving our technology scale up. Next slide please. Um, in addition to the business development we maintain a very strong R&D program in particularly focused around the unique graphite product produced from our process um, and this year we're very excited to be working on a number of novel purification um, and functionalization technologies. So ways of purifying our graphite from the approximate 90% purity that we'll produce it from direct from the reactor up to 99.5 or above to open up more high value markets for our graphite. So we have some very prospective R&D that we're continuing to work on with our partnership with the University of Sydney. Next slide please. Um, to the graphite product, um, as well as hydrogen, which is the key focus of low emission hydrogen, the graphite we produce is a unique synthetic graphite. Um, we are exchanging samples and talking to potential customers. Um, the graphite market is slow, technical and complex, um, but potentially uh, very high value in, in a number of um, specialist, man, uh, specialist manufacturing applications. And so we've seen interest and see potential applications in uh, uses as, as diverse as uh, the creation of lithium battery anode materials, uh, the creation of electrodes for advanced metals manufacturing, um, or its use in novel water purification techniques, uh, particularly with various organic contaminants where it's showing a lot of potential. So we will continue to invest heavily in the R&D to make sure that we have value-adding paths for the hazer graphite that we've produced alongside the low emission hydrogen. Next slide, please. Uh, so in then just before we summarise, um, the other key point that I would flag is that we are fully funded to build this first bits type project. Um, that we strengthened our balance sheet and diversified our funding through 2020 and our balance sheet is now a mixture of grants, uh, both state and federal, debt and equity. Um, and in April 2021, we were very pleased to welcome AP Ventures as a strategic investor. Uh, AP Ventures are a London based specialist hydrogen venture capital fund. Um, who've made, you know, over, uh, we believe, over 20 specialist hydrogen investments in the last two years, and we're very pleased to be part of their stable. So we have a strong cash balance, um, including uh, 9.41 million uh, of arena grant funding, of which we've only so far drawn 2 million. Um, we have uh, $4 million of unsecured, uh, undrawn senior secured debt, um, and uh, we have just received the proceeds, or post this cash balance, we've received $4 million proceeds from AP Ventures Strategic Investment. So we are well funded to, to undertake both our project, our R&D and our business development activities. Uh, final slide, please. 
So in summary, um, Hazer is a, a unique Australian developed uh, low carbon process for producing hydrogen um, and produces a valuable graphite byproduct. So capturing all the carbon associated with the hydrogen feedstock. Uh, we have taken it from a laboratory and pilot stage and we're now into a development project or a demonstration project, I should say, rolling out the first continuously operating larger scale example of the technology. We have a strong R&D platform and balance sheet to continue to advance our technology. And we're working closely uh, with Keynes National Partners like Geoda Corporation on rolling out future projects. So thank you for your time today. And I look forward to um, seeing further dramatic developments in 2021.